your best fake laugh? <laughs> Wow, really jumping the shark with a thumbnail this week, eh guys? I mean, come on. Different colouring on the letters, a different pen for cleaner linos, Gaussian blurring for better lighting. I'm starting to look more like an art student than a chemist. All I need now is a beanie hat, a selection of Wes Anderson posters, and a bad enough smoking habit for my mum to blacklist me from her will. Neon is the second of the noble gases, and like its little sister helium, it has no interest in reacting with other chemical compounds under standard conditions. Like all of the noble gases, neon atoms have full outer shells of electrons, which experiments have shown to be an extremely stable configuration. All atoms want to have neat, complete shells of electrons, and there are three main ways to get them. Option one, atoms like Lithium with only a handful of outermost electrons can donate them to other atoms so the completed shell underneath becomes the new top shell, a chemical process called oxidation. Option two, atoms like fluorine that nearly have completed shells can accept extra electrons from other atoms to fill it up completely, a process called reduction. Or option three, for noble gas atoms just have a completed shell already and don't bother with any of that chemistry stuff. There's no stability for neon atoms to gain by accepting or donating electrons, which is the process that drives chemical bonding, so there's no incentive to form compounds with other atoms. In the game of chemistry, Monopoly, Neon's already won. It's bought all the properties, mortgaged all the houses, and used the proceeds to make a little sparkly dog collar out of blood diamonds and Fabergé eggs. Helium and neon gas are both produced in large amounts in stars, where the enormous temperatures and pressures allow them to be made by nuclear fusion. But on the cool, watery surface of the Earth, neither of them are particularly abundant. Helium can be extracted as an impurity in natural gas, but the only known source of neon within our reach is the atmosphere, and there's not a lot of it to go around. The concentration of neon in air is about 18.2 parts per million. To make a litre of purified neon, Neon, you need to process 56,000 litres of liquefied air. Not exactly ideal when you're trying to scale up to an industrial scale. Neon was discovered in 1898 by William Ramsey from Scotland and Morris Travers from England, who were investigating the chemical composition of liquefied air. Different compounds have different boiling points, so by heating up the mixture degree by degree, Ramsey and Travers were able to separate the gases by bubbling them out from solution at the temperature they had boiled at, a chemical process now known as fractional distillation. Ramsey had contributed towards the discovery of argon a few years prior, but after after analysing the chemical composition of the newly separated gases, there were a few unfamiliar elements that caught his eye. After carefully separating them out, the pair realised they discovered trace amounts of three new elements in one go. First Krypton, then Neon, then Xenon. Ever the gentleman, Ramsey let his son William Jr. choose the name of one of these exciting new elements, making Neon the first element to ever be named by an 11 year old. William Jr. suggested the element's name be derived from Neos, which literally translates to new in ancient Greek. Now, Neon is a pretty snappy name in a vacuum, but in my opinion, young William's choice was absolutely rubbish, the pretentious little sod. Not only has Neon not been the newest element on the periodic table for 130 years, the reigning champion being Tennessee, but it wasn't even the most recent element discovered by his dad. Still, trusting a secondary school student to name an element could have gone a lot worse, I guess. Can't imagine TikTokium Fortnitrogen or, I don't know, Miss Seacum from Set 2 Maths' Fitrium would have gone down well in the chemistry journals. Now, for this next bit, we're going to need to turn down the lights. There we go, nice and depressing, getting that indie game vibe in already. As you can probably guess, the most famous use of neon is in those wonderfully tacky displays found outside Las Vegas casinos and dodgy kebab shops. If sealed in a low pressure tube and jolted with several thousand volts of electricity, gases will change into plasma, a glowing gaseous soup of electrons and positively charged nuclei. Neon plasma has a distinctive red-orange glow and was the gas most commonly used when electrical advertising took off in the 1920s. But neon isn't the only gas you can get coloured plasma out of. Argon, the noble gas right below neon on the period its table, glows with a very faint purple colour, but if you dope it with a tiny amount of vaporised mercury, it will emit intense bursts of ultraviolet light. Manufacturers can then line the tubes of their signs with fluorescent paints known as phosphors, which will absorb the UV radiation and emit it back out as visible light. In addition, you can mix and match other noble gases to get more vivid colours, giving you an entire rainbow of tacky electrified colour to blind your patrons with. Neon is best used for reds, oranges and pinks, but if you've ever seen a quote-unquote neon sign that's blue or heliotrope trope or goose turd green. Yes, that's a real colour, don't ask me why. There's a good chance it doesn't contain any neon at all. Right then, lights. Huh. Should probably stop clicking this thing. Unfortunately, demand for neon science has slumped in recent years. As mentioned before, neon is pretty rare and extracting it from the atmosphere can be eye-wateringly expensive. Even argon, which is about 500 times as abundant in the atmosphere as neon, doesn't exactly grow on trees, and the shift towards digital advertising has only hastened neon's irrelevance in the modern world. But as long as there's interest in 50s diners, 60s casinos, and 80s strip clubs, I'm sure there'll be a home for neon somewhere.
And right, that's basically all the science stuff I wanted to say. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I recently got my hands on a lovely new drawing tablet, which I was able to buy with a grant generously awarded to me by the Alaman Arts Council. I've had my old tablet for about eight years, so I figured I was pretty overdue for an update, but what an update it was. I mean, it's got a screen and everything, so I can actually see what I'm drawing without my neck crunching like the world's fleshiest glow stick. So cheers to everyone that helped support the channel. Uh, we're only a few subs away from getting up to 200, so please consider telling your friends and family to subscribe. Forcibly, if necessary. What's that, little Timmy? You don't know how to subscribe? Well, better sign in with your Google accounts and click the big red button under the video while someone's not getting their insulin pump back. But in all seriousness, big thank you to everyone for helping me grow the channel. Onwards and upwards and all that good stuff. Should probably think of something witty to end the video on, but if I don't think of anything, I'll probably just jump cut straight to the credits.